invited to the joint meeting for the rules and open government committee and committee of the whole. Uh, if we can have a roll call, please. Arenas? Cohen? Here. Davis? Here. Perales? Jones? Present. Thank you. Okay, so we're on to the first item, which is the agenda for May 24th. And we're going to start out on pages four and five. Six and seven. Eight and nine. Ten and eleven. Twelve and thirteen. Fourteen and fifteen. Sixteen. And there is an ad sheet for the maker of the motion. But before we go to the committee, let's go to the public. Are there any public comments on this agenda? Yeah, I want to um, I want to reiterate to the members of the public that this is for items on the May twenty fourth agenda. This, this does not include the consent calendar items yet. So if you want to speak regarding the non-citizen voting rights, this is not the time to do it. Um, this is just commenting on the May 24th agenda itself and the items on it. Um, the first speaker I have is Angelica. Sí, buenas tardes, uh, concejales. Mi nombre es Angelica. Okay, hold on just a second. Of course. Um, so those people who wish to hear the translated version go down to, I, mean, I need to stop share for a second. Um, you need to go down to the interpretation button at the bottom of your screen and change the, um, the audio, I think to the English channel. If that doesn't work, then switch to the Spanish channel. Um, anybody using the interpreter will get four minutes. Again, this is only for the May 24th agenda. This is not related to non-citizen voting rights. That's the next item. If you wanna talk about non-citizen voting rights, please put your hand down and raise it for the next item. Okay, I'm gonna go back to Angelica. Um, Angelica, please, I know you're hearing my, inter my words interpreted. So please um, speak slowly so the interpreter can um, interpret for you and everybody can hear you. Um, go ahead. Uh, gracias, thank you. Thank you. Once again, I'm Angelica. I live in the Mayfair neighborhood. I'm a mother of three and I live in San Jose for many years, oh, over 25 years. I, I have a, a small business that I own with other people and I always pay taxes. Currently, I'm not able to vote and I would like to have the right to vote to choose because I feel like if I'm someone who pays taxes and I'm contributing to the economy of the country and also to the economy of this city. Okay, excuse me, I Angelica. Angelica? That, that is not this item, that's the next item. So I'm going to call on you for, put your hand back up for the next item and we'll take your comment during consent calendar. Um, I'm going to move on to the next person. Okay, all hands are now down. You guys can go ahead and discuss the agenda. And again, anybody who wants to speak on non-citizen voting rights, that's the, the very, very next item. Thank you, Tony. Um, bringing it back to the committee, but before I 
entertain a motion. I want to ask Rob, who's doing his best Lee Wilcox impersonation, um, about load balancing for this agenda. And have we done everything possible to, to minimize uh, the agenda to make it manageable? Vice Mayor, uh, Rob Boyd, WC Manager for the City of San Jose. Uh, we have um, Lee Wilcox, Assistant City Manager, is continuing to work with uh, some of the groups, but uh, he's really put the uh, scrutiny on the items to make sure that June's as balanced as it can be. Great. That's good to hear. I'm going to keep asking him that question, though. I'm going to keep the heat on. He wanted to make sure we have impossible <laughs> agendas in June. All right, so bringing it back to the committee. Move approval with the ad sheet. Great, thank you. Second. Move and second it. Uh, roll call, please. Cohen? Aye. Davis? Yes. Perales? Yes. Jones? Aye. Okay, thank you. Okay, on to the consent calendar and Tony, if you can yes. let so I know that they can comment on the non-citizen voting item. Yes, so everybody who wants to comment on the last consent calendar item now or any other consent calendar item, um, now is the time to raise your hand. So if you're here to speak about non-citizen voting, please raise your hand. Um, again, for those of you who wish to hear the translation, you'll go down to the bottom of your Zoom screen, click interpretation and select the English channel, and you'll be able to hear the interpreter on that channel. Um, and anybody with an interpreter will get four minutes and everybody else will have two minutes. Um, first hand up is Chris Dunlap. Thank you. My name is Chris Dunlap and I work in Santa Clara County. I am here to support the Our Voice, Rights and Vote Coalition's demand that the Rules Committee schedule the study session on non-citizen voting in San Jose as soon as possible. Immigrants are fundamentally important to our economy, our neighborhoods and the fabric of our communities. San Jose literally would not function without them. It's time that they had a political voice to match this importance. And it's fundamental that our city council members honor the commitment they made to the people in January. Thank you. Blair Beekman. Hi, Blair Beekman here. Uh, thanks for the meeting today. Um, I guess I wanted to speak on two items. One, uh, my letters to the public. Uh, thanks, that was placed in letters to the public. I, I tried to speak about, uh, write about, I had a question of, uh, the future of the budget process. Uh, it's been several years now and it's gone through many different forms. Uh, it used to be a few years ago, a lot more public input was allowed that didn't happen this year. You know, everything was uh, bunched at the end. He tried some spaces and it kind of worked, but in the past, after each item, there was time for public comment. And I like that system much better. Um, and I hope you can, can work uh, to continue that in the future and bring it back in some way, maybe a minute for each item instead of two minutes. I don't know, it's a form of compromise. To have public input uh, on, on as items are going through, I think it's important to be considering. And for the other item about the future of, uh, you know, what we're going to do about uh, voting and how to allow uh, voting issues for all people of the city, uh, you know, my part in this process is to really ask um, can we, as a part of the study session process, can we be considering our current English only laws and how those are seriously affecting our decision making for items like this? And basically throughout the city, how we have Zoom functions is based on these English only laws. You know, these exorbitant uh, Zoom fees uh, for uh, interpretation is based on this English only system. I really hope that you know it's ingrained in all of us that we and from that we can have a serious conversation how to work out of this time from the 1980s. Um, good luck how to work on this issue. Thank you. Elizabeth. Hi, my name is Elizabeth and I have lived in San Jose for the last eight years in downtown D3. I'm here in solidarity with the immigrant community. 
We are disappointed and upset because of your decision to delay the voting rights study session. As a council, you have already agreed to have the study session and we're here as a community to demand that the study session occur in May. Please do your job and listen to the community, the immigrant community that makes up nearly 40% of the population of the city of San Jose. And so we are ready to take action to ensure that our voices and demands are heard and widely felt throughout this community. It is unjust to keep so many members of our society who contribute every day and are impacted in every which way by local laws yet are unable to express their vote, a constitutional right. Ya basta, enough is enough. Voting rights for all. You as a council have the power to not ignore or silence those in the immigrant community. I'm here on behalf of the immigrant community. My father who lived the majority of his life undocumented received his permanent residency who taught me everything I know about civic engagement and being active in the community. The city that he loved but died without ever receiving the right to vote. Show that you truly understand the influence and importance of the immigrant community residents of San Jose and hold the voting rights study session on May 23rd, 6 p.m. Thank you. Angelita. Good afternoon. My name is Angelita Cheveste and I am a voting resident in our community. I am here today to request that the study session take place this month, not as soon as possible, but this month. The Rules Committee must prioritize this. We have a lot of families here who work day in, day out, cooking for us, taking care of our children, cleaning the streets. Why are we continuously taking the power away and making people feel that they are second class? They're good enough to work for us. They're good enough to clean for us. They're good enough to pay taxes. They're good enough to pay even some of our, what is it called? Some of our... Um, our checks, we are living off their backs. We are benefiting off their backs. I con continuously hear the importance of creating systems that are not racist or anti-racist. How is this not continuing? How does this not perpetuate that? Are we afraid that if we allow other people to vote that their voice is gonna shut us down because we're continuously passing laws, policies that are racist against them? Is that what's keeping us? Is it fear? is a fear of being seen as who we really are and having everyone see the light. This is, this is really what it boils down to. We're pushing the study session beyond the time enough to make it to the, to, the, to the ballot. Why is that? In benefit of who? In benefit of what politicians? In benefit of, of, of who? Who will benefit from that? Not those that are working day in, day out. Once again, not as soon as possible, but today, in this month. Thank you. Jennifer. Jennifer, comienza. Buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Jennifer Parra, porque soy miembro aquí de San José. Can you hold on y just a second? Uh, espera un momento, por favor. Go ahead. Try again. Intente de nuevo. Yes, you're Ahora right. sí. Um, Parece que... Oh, está usando. Okay, you tell me when you're ready. So I hold on. I just want to make sure everybody's on the right channel so we can all hear the interpretation. Interpreter, can I hear from you? Okay, so yeah, everybody switch from English over to the Spanish channel. And then I'm going to restart the timer. Um, so she gets the full four minutes. Okay, go ahead. Good afternoon, members of the Bulls Committee. My name is Jennifer Parra and I'm a resident of San Jose. I'm here today to ask that you please approve a study session for the expansion of voting rights to all San Jose residents as soon as possible. Our immigrant community contributes to our city in many ways that gives San Jose its vibrancy. However, we don't have the right to vote, as well as being denied the opportunity to be heard as to why that should change. It is necessary to have the study session as soon as possible to begin having the conversation as to why this is an important issue. Once again, I urge that you please schedule the study session as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Oh, 
Hold on. I'm sorry about the confusion, everybody. The Spanish interpreter was on the English channel. So I thought everything was messed up, but everything's good. I was just misunderstanding. So I apologize for the confusion. Um, Gabriel. It Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Gabriel Manrique, community organizer with Luna, also part of the coalition or Boys Rights and Vote. And I'm also a resident of District 3. I support extending the voting rights to everyone in San Jose. It is essential to schedule the study session for May 23rd at 6 p.m. Expanding the vote will have a positive impact on our communities. It is unfair to tax residents, and yet they do have limited representation and limited power in our society. I urge you to schedule the study session for May 23rd at 6 p.m. Thank you. Celia. Sí, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Celia Álvarez. Soy una residente contribuyente de San José por casi 30 años. Y la verdad estoy muy decepcionada y enojada. Decept deception of here because of this. Uh, this you're not allowing me to vote, and this has been allowed. Nosotros hemos estado presentes, dejamos trabajar para venir y estar aquí y apoyar para que pase en este mes de mayo. A mí me encantaría que por favor nos tomen en serio y se pueda programar el 23 de mayo, como se había dicho, a las 6 de la tarde, porque estamos listos para tomar acción directa y poder hacer todo el ruido que se necesite en esta ciudad para que puedan tomar su decisión. Can you sí. hold on, Celia, can you hold on? I'm not hearing any interpreter right now on any channel. Same. Can, um, can you hear me now? Okay. Okay, I was on the Spanish channel. I think I didn't move over to the English. I apologize. Okay, now you're back on English. Okay. So um, the interp C C C yeah. Celia, I'm gonna okay. have you start over. I need you to speak a little slower so we can also hear the interpreter interpret what you're saying. Yeah, so okay, the full benefit of your words. Okay, Celia, go ahead. My name is my name is Celia Alvarez. I'm a resident contributor here in San Jose for 30 years. I am very un, uh, I'm very upset about the the situation that has gone because you've been pushing back the studies that to allow us to vote. We had already mentioned that this studies in the past and we would have been present, and so we could allow this to, for the 23rd of May, what, what uh, uh, in accordance it was. We didn't go to work, or we weren't, we weren't present to be here. We didn't go to work or anything to allow this. There was excuses and excuses, and there was changing and changing the date. They didn't allow it. This is not, uh, this is not an appropriate way to handle things. We really want you to have that representation here because we pay our our contributions, where our taxes, and we are abiding by all the laws here. And we want you to take us into consideration the respect that we allow us to have respect for us to be here because we're doing everything well and that that's why we want you to be here. We want you to have this. Thank you very much. I hope you can go ahead and do it and schedule it for May 23rd. Angelica. Angelica put her hand down. So let's go to Kim Guptal. My name is Kim Guptill. I'm a member of Surge at Sacred Heart, and I vote in District 6. I'm here to support the Our Voice, Rights, and Vote Coalition's demand that the Rules Committee schedule the study session on non-citizen voting in San Jose as soon as possible. 
Immigrants are vital to our community. Our economy would grind to an abrupt halt without them. This is not to mention the cultural richness that they bring to our community. I'm sure you'll agree that expanding democracy is always a good idea and that no taxation without representation is a basic American principle for those of you that have pointed out specifically that uh, it, this is a constitutional issue. It's important for our city council members to honor the commitment they made to the people in January and agendize this issue as soon as possible. Thank you. Victor Vasquez. Hello, my name is Victor Vasquez at some of Mayfair, part of the coalition as well. I echo all the sentiments shared with the community and I'm hopeful that you all can open up your minds and hearts to move forward towards building a deeper democracy. I believe there are some forces against this, of course, and but many of us are also in support of the project and it's natural to have feelings of anger and um, disappointment given that the realities of economic and racial injustice impact us. But it's also clear that, that this policy might bring some, a sense of doubt in a, in a sense of this might be a stretch for us. But the reality is that these feelings have also changed throughout society. Remember that it is factual that in, 19, in the 1700s, voting was only limited to white men who could help property. That idea was changed. In the 1920s, women technically won the right to vote despite facing a lot of opposition. That was also progress. In the 1960s, there were so many barriers in the Southern states to prevent people of color from voting. That was also changed. There was a time that, um, and recently we have seen how other states have also fought to um, suppress voting rights, like in Atlanta, uh, in Georgia in, in 2018. And so people organized and saw a different change and helped expand the democratic process. And so this idea that it might be a doubt, in reality, it will be a future. It will lead San Jose into expanding voting rights for all, and it will put us in the front for, in the front of what it means to have a democratic city. And so there are two roads in San Jose that we can follow. We can follow the history of being against expansion of voting rights or in the pathway of expanding democracy to all of us. The possibility is in your hands. I demand also that you hold a study session in March as soon as possible and make this a reality and put San Jose on the map as being a democratic city. Thank you. Eliza Gonzalez. Good afternoon. My name is Tilsa Gonzalez. I am um, a member of the committee, um, Our Rights, um, Nuestro Derecho, Voz y Voto. I am here to ask the, the committee to please allow the study sessions to happen as soon as possible. We cannot wait for August. We cannot wait for September. We had a date, we had a time, and it was changed without community knowledge. I am here to urge everybody to make the right decision, to stand with community that is here today asking for the study session to happen in May. We are not asking for something impossible. We know we could add it in those agendas and give this a priority that it deserves. Communities here, we want to do it. We want to hear about it. Um, the, we have, you have heard, and I'm not, I'm, I'm gonna be able to repeat it because it is true. I contribute, my community contribute millions of dollars in taxes. We have grown in this community. This is our home, our city. We contribute with our food, with our culture, with our language, and many other ways. Our kids are being raised here. We deserve the right and opportunity to choose what happens within our cities. We won't want our voice to be silent anymore. You have the power to allow the study session to happen, to give community what we want, to listen, and to be able to participate. Please do the right thing and stand with community. Stand with us today and allow the study session to happen in May. Thank you, and I yield my time. Chelsea. Hi, my name is Chelsea Pruitt. I'm with the Vecinos Activos and Somos Mayfair. I've been learning about the voting campaign, and I can't think of any reason why we would not include greater representation in San Jose's democracy. There's so much energy, passion, strategy and political action in our city. And it doesn't make sense to me that not everybody's voice would be included in voting. So I support the campaign to expand democracy. Um, 
And I think that anybody who contributes and lives here should be allowed to vote. So I, I echo the call um, for no more delays. Please schedule the study, study session for May 23rd. Thank you. David? Hello, good afternoon. My name is David Vivanco. I am a resident of San Jose. I am a taxpayer. We are disappointed and angry that the study session is being delayed for voters' rights. The counselor has agreed to do this study session, but we want it, uh, if we can possibly have it, May 23rd at 6 p.m. Uh, due to a lot of people here would like to hear and speak out for the right to vote. We contribute a lot to San Jose and we would definitely like our voice to be heard. Um, we need to hear everybody's voice so it can be, uh, so it can be fair and, uh, and help our needs in making San Jose better. So please, we are, we are here to all to offer you guys to have the session May 23rd at 6 p.m. Thank you. Rosa? Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Rosa Córdoba. Soy un contribuyente. And I'm also a contribution here in the city of San Jose. I'm very disappointed okay, because you had pushed back the time for uh, it's in, in accordance to agreeing us to vote. You, you had a, in accordance and stated that you wanted to be present here so it could be allowed for the study in May. You're not doing your work as you had told us you would and, and, and listening to our community. It, it has been delayed over and over again and now it's May 23rd and we would already said we were going to be present at that time, May 23rd at 6 a.m. Please do not ignore us. Ignoring us is not going to help. We want to continue because we don't have a right to it. You please go ahead and do it. Program it and on the 23rd of May at 6 p.m. Thank you. Tony? Um, good afternoon, uh, members of the Rules Committee. Uh, my name is Tony Romero. I am a community organizer with Latinos United for a New America. Um, I am here to speak about the extending municipal body uh, eligibility to all city residents. Uh, I am here to urge the Rules Committee to keep the study session uh, on May 23rd at 6 p.m. In January, the Council agreed to have this study session to learn about the possibility of expanding body rights to non-citizens. Now it is being postponed to September 6th. That's nine months in between the agreement and the study session. And there's really no clear understanding when a decision will be made. There's no accountability to a decision that was already agreed. We want to have a democratic process to learn and discuss this concern many San Jose residents have, but all you're doing with these delays, angering and disappointing San Jose residents. This is a concern that should be prioritized by the council and should not be delayed. You have the power to schedule the study session on May 23rd, as it was expected. Thank you for your time. Ms. Rayan Mendoza. Hello. Yes, my name is Ms. Rayan Mendoza, and I work with the Middle of the Guadalupe uh, Center for Justice and Empowerment, and I'm a community navigator. And I'm here to support uh, the extension of the uh, vote. Uh, we cannot be delaying this any longer. Please, uh, either if it's the clerk or the city councils, whoever has the power to put it uh, uh, forward, please put it forward. We want to study this, give us the opportunity to educate the community. 
okay and uh we need to start it okay uh september is too too uh uh it's too far okay we need a little uh something closer let's come to a hopefully we can come to a conclusion a little maybe in between i know the calendar is very uh very busy okay uh but we knew we knew this since january so uh uh please is, is, don't, don't come out like a, if it's a surprise it's not a surprise uh we knew about it uh you guys knew about it and uh and please uh do not delay it any longer uh and let's let's work together on this okay as you guys as a representative and our leaders uh and uh you guys have to support us and and, and give us the chance you know to have a voice uh, thank you Juan Lujano. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Juan Angel Lujano, and I am a taxpaying resident here in San Jose. Um, I'm extremely disappointed in city council, as well as this committee, uh, for delaying the voting rights study session. If we had agreed to have this session back in January, why, why do we keep on moving it back, right? Uh, the point is that we want to enhance our, our voters and we want to be able to have a community voice in, in that vote. And the fact that it keeps on getting postponed without any, honestly, any good reason um, is extremely disappointing. So I'm in favor of supporting um, the vote of having the voting rights uh, study session on May 23rd at 6 p.m. And I hope that you will also um, take that into consideration and have it the day. Thank you. 7189330. No, oh, sorry, 7189330. You're unmuted, but we can't hear any, we don't hear you. Does anybody hear the speaker? I do not. No. Okay, we're gonna move on to the next person, which is Maria Martinez with Somos Mayfair. Sí, buenas tardes, miembros de... Uh, yes, good afternoon. Uh, members of the board, I'm Maria Martinez. I'm a resident of District 5 for 15 years. I'm here to support the right to vote. I'm disappointed and upset that this is being delayed. Uh, we want to have a voice and we want to be able to make decisions that benefit all of us. I'm tired of listening. of listening to the board of school that they're there because of the fact that we selected them. And that's why I would like to see if this committee of rules can establish this meeting for May 23rd. We're ready so that we're ready. We're gonna make noise on the streets and we're gonna make wait for your decisions, please make it a priority because we need to have this uh, power of vote because we're being affected by not having it. Thank you. Arturo Munoz. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Arturo Munoz. Someone is a resident taxpayer and member of the our voice, right, and vote coalition. We're in a great disappointment to have been promised a voting rights study session, yet it still continue to be postponed. And as mentioned by other colleagues within the um, same meeting today, it has been promised um, five months ago, and it's, it's not a surprise to have uh, this urgency, right, of like five months of waiting and no study session has been placed or scheduled. And so we're urging that May 23rd at 6 p.m., we do schedule a study session for our community to be 
um, to be present and being able to engage within the study session as well. As mentioned by others too, we are also ready to take direct action if instead this continues to be postponed, knowing that um, we are tired of waiting and we are disappointed and we are growing frustrated at the um, instead at you all promising to to move forward with this study session. Yet it's not there's no instead steps forward for that, right? And so again, we urge to um, instead schedule the study session for May 23rd at 6 p.m. Um, again, it's the, this, is, this is a benefit for all of San Jose, and we want to encourage all our community to be part of that too as well. And um, thank you, and uh, I yield the rest of my time. Andrea Portillo. Hello, my name is Andrea Portillo with Somos Mayfair, and I'm also here supporting the Our Voice Rights and Vote Coalition. On January 11th, 2022, over 55 social justice organizations signed, full, signed on and with full support of expanding the voting rights to all San Jose res residents, regardless of immigration status. Despite having over 200 San Jose residents and organizations speaking up in support of expanding voting rights and city council taking a historic 10 to one vote to move forward with the voting rights memo, we are now seeing a delay in the process. Our communities contribute economically, socially, and culturally, and remain a fabric of this city. It is only fair and right for all residents of the city of San Jose to have the power to vote on local issues that impact them. The history of voter exclusion impacting communities of color has a long history and is rooted in racism and a legacy of white supremacy. Recently, cities like San Francisco and New York have extended voting rights to undocumented people and non-citizens. Expanding voting rights would strengthen community self-determination, democracy, and a sense of belonging. We demand the study session happen on May 23rd at 6 p.m. No more decisions about us without us. Thank you. Guadalupe. Guadalupe Perez. Sí, me escuchan? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. My name is Guadalupe Perez. I'm here because I would like to request that, that we can go ahead and have on the agenda the right, the, the study session for the right to vote. I've been living here for more than 25 years. I do pay my taxes every year and I, that's, and I want you to know that I'm paying over $20,000 in taxes this year. And I think I have the right. And I'm not only contributing to the economy of the nation, but also to the economy of San Jose. And I believe that as an essential worker that is contributing to the recovery of the economy in this community, I think that give us the right to be able to vote. We want to be able to feel that we are included, that we are part of it. I want to feel like that I'm that I have a place not only to survive financially, but I want the right to vote not only for me for but also for the community and that we can contribute to the voting and for the decisions where we work and we live. I would like to request to please do not postpone the day that had been already scheduled for May 23rd. We want to have that right so that we can so that we can continue working here in San Jose because we're the, the hardworking people of San Jose in this city, in this country. Basically, what the government does is work with our money, and, and we feel that we should have the right to vote. So please keep it for May 23rd. Please, no mas. Thank you. Fermina Reyes. Buenas tardes. ¿Me escuchan? Fermina Reyes. Good afternoon. Mina. Uh, we lost Fermina's microphone uh, icon. 
So I don't know if her microphone disconnected. Um, we're going to move on to the next person, but for Mina, if you raise your hand again, you'll get your full time since you dropped off so quickly. Um, Yurina? Yurina? Okay, I'm going to move on to Jessica. Yes, hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jessica Trejo and, I'm a, and I am a District 3 resident in San Jose. I am um, also disappointed, angry, and frustrated that the non-citizen voting rights study session is being delayed. The council had already agreed to have the study session and I wanna see the session happen in May this month. Please stop the delay. This is an urgent matter for me and my family and my community. Please use your power to schedule the study session now. We have suffered enough racism and systemic oppression and we want change. We want it now. We cannot be taken lightly any longer. We all deserve the right to vote for a just democracy for all, not for a few, not for some, but for everyone, for all. We are ready to take direct action and make noise in the city regardless of the outcome of your decision, but I hope that you do find it in your hearts to move forward and keep the study session on schedule for May 23rd at 6 p.m. Thank you very much. Sonia? Sonia Solano? Hi. Can you hear yeah. me? Yes. Good afternoon. My name is Sonia Solano. Um, I'm upset. I'm disappointed that the study session to have the right to vote has been postponed. The city council had agreed to have this session and we wanted to be present. We were there when it was decided. You're not doing your work. The city council basically asked for this study session. Please stop the delay. Keep the study session for May 20 at 6 p.m. We're ready to make our voices heard and we're gonna make noise. You have the power to establish this meeting to schedule it. And I think the reason why you are not giving priority to our need is because you want to keep the vote away from us. Please keep this May 20th study session on the agenda. Thank you. Jill Anderson. Hello, my name is Jill Anderson. I'm calling today as a resident of San Jose and as a family member and colleague of documented and undocumented residents of San Jose. I stand with this request that the Rules Committee follow through on the January vote to, prior to prioritize the study session in May and in so doing to make the ballot measure deadline. Including the expanding voting rights for all for vote on the official ballot does not seem like common sense because of the racist distortions about who belongs in this country and who doesn't. These distortions are both deeply historical in our country and they're also emerging in things we are witnessing like the tragic events in the Buffalo shootings, the El Paso shootings before that. In San Jose, I believe that we know better. This is common sense. This is the arc of justice and this is democracy in action. All residents of San Jose, including documented and undocumented immigrants, are an integral part of the many ways this city survives and thrives. It is the right thing to do and it is the smart thing to do, to recognize political participation based on residency and not one's birthplace or a nation-based affiliation. 15 cities have already expanded the right to vote to all residents, including New York City and San Francisco. San Jose can be the next major city to include immigrant voters in the political process if our city government gives us the chance and acts with the voice and vision of those we are hearing today. Commit to the ballot measure deadline to expand voting rights in, 
for all immigrants in city elections include council members. Do not add waiting time or penalties for suffrage. Thank you for your consideration and when the time comes for your bravery in moving this vote forward. Gabby Gutierrez. Gabby. Okay, I'm gonna move on to Sigrid Jacobson. Hi, my name is Sigrid Jacobson. I'm a member of Surge Sacred Heart. I'm here to support the Our Voice Rights and Votes Coalition's um, request that the Rules Committee schedule the session on non-citizen voting in San Jose ASAP. Um, my husband is a permanent resident, has been living in the United States for 20 years, um, contributes and um, is active politically as far as he can be without voting. Um, and I think the other piece of this is we have a broken immigration system. People are often waiting years and years and years to get through to their citizenship. In the meantime, they are productive, constructive, creative members of our community. Um, and this is, we're just asking for a study session. This is not nothing more than actually just learning more. So um, there's everything to be gained and nothing to be lost. Um, I would just encourage to schedule this as soon as possible to honor the commitment that the city council made in January. Thank you and I yield my time. Alina Yin. Hello. Um, I echo and support the many callers before me, and I believe that the non-citizen community are an invaluable part of our economy and community, and their voices deserve to be heard. When council met on January 11th, I remember specifically Councilmember Jones and Davis saying that there is nothing stopping people, regardless of documentation status, from participating in the process and attending meetings and advocating for their needs. And this is the democratic process, and this is exactly what is happening. The people on this call, the people who've been here, and a part of this initiative are practicing their democratic values and following the process and council should do the same as part of your oath of office. A promise was made on January 11th to listen to the community and I think it's important that it is honored. Delaying this until September puts it past the deadline for the ballot initiative to be turned into Santa Clara County, which is August 12th, which would mean that this initiative would not make it on the November 8th ballot at all and the chances would then be delayed until 2024. And so I ask you to keep your promises. This is only a study session and allowing this discussion to happen at such a time is so important and we all deserve to be heard. Um, thank you, I yield my time. Myra Palagio. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Myra Pelagio. Executive Director with Luna, Latinos United for New America, and here with the Voz Derecho Voto Coalition. And we have been advocating for this issue to come to council for the past five months. And as we've seen, our quote unquote democratic processes are not accessible for everybody and continuously changing the meeting times for issues as important as this one discourages our communities from participating in the meetings. And it also expands the distrust that the community has to our local government. Please ensure that the study session is held this month so that we can have the expansion of voter rights to all San Joseans in the ballots for this November. I ask you to schedule the study session for May 23rd in the evening when it is more accessible for our communities to participate in this democratic process. Thank you and I yield the rest of my time. Natalia. Good afternoon, my name is Italia. I am a taxpayer resident in San Jose. We are disappointed, angered at the fact that you are delaying and making false promises on when to hold the voting rights study session. The council has agreed to have the study session already. You are not doing your job and what the council asked from you. Stop the delay, schedule the se study session now. We are ready to take direct action and make noise in the city based on your decision. You have the power to schedule the study session, yet you choose to ignore, ignore us. We are, we are confident the reason why you don't prioritize our voice is because we continue to lack the right to vote. This is clearly why we need to prior, prioritize expanding the vote to all. Schedule the study session for May 23rd at 6 p.m. I yield my time. 
Gustavo Flores. Eh, sí, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Gustavo Flores. Antes um, que yes, good, uh, Gustavo Flores, and good afternoon. I want to appreciate all the city council and and thank you very much for this um, opportunity for me to speak. My name again is Gustavo Flores. I'm also a resident and the um, the county of Santa Clara, and I work uh, been here for the. I'm a father of two daughters. I've been paying my uh, my taxes, and I'm with a beautiful city I live here and I'm here and I'm um, uh, supporting all the, the, the voices here to allow us to be able to vote in this this um, session this study session for the 23rd of May is what we need to not only it's is it necessary for us to do that but all for the immigrants to voice their opinion here this is the fourth it's worth a fourth of the part here in the city that immigrants here and we want to uh, be uh, able to allow for uh, security in all the population here and being able to allow us to be able to vote and and we want to and we please we want to it's not only just but it's necessary we really appreciate that and we're thanking city hall to allow us to do that but out nor only not only asking but we do need to for the 23rd of May and the six in the evening for us. And thank you very much for your, um, for your time and your patience. Thank you. Eva. Uh, buenas tardes, mi nombre es Eva Heredia. My name is Eva Heredia. And I'm also a resident here and a immigrant here in San Jose. And I'm, I'm here and also in the community. I participate a lot. For the last 25 years, I've been paying um, taxes. And I need the opportunity to vote, to be able to. And I really I ask you that we want to, to allow us on the 23rd of May at 6 PM. And thank you very much for it. And please do not delay this any longer because we really want us to know that and the support that you will allow us and give us. Thank you very much for the time. Alexandra. Alexandra. Hello, Hello my name is Alexandra Rodriguez. Um, good afternoon. Um, I'm a resident of San Jose, and I'm here today to ask you guys that you please approve the study session um, of voting rights to all of San Jose residents as soon as possible. Our immigrant community contributes to our city in many ways that give San Jose its vibrancy. However, we don't have the right to vote. Once again, I urge you to please schedule the study session for May 23rd at 6 p.m. Thank you, and have the day you deserve. I revoke my time. Maria Lamelli. Hola, buenas tardes. Uh, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Go ahead. Buenas tardes. Nice. Okay. Good afternoon. Maria, we can hear you. Sí, podemos escucharla, Maria. Good afternoon. How are you? Hello. Hello. Go ahead. I'm a resident here of San Jose and District 7, and we're waiting here for ability to be able to for the 23rd of May for us to allow us to and just uh, thank you very much. I just want us to be able to uh, allow us to vote that day. Thank you. I yield the time. Veronica Avendano. Veronica. Hello. Okay, I'm gonna, oh, go ahead. Yeah, buenas tardes. Okay, good afternoon, Veronica. 
Avendano, and I'm here. I've been here for 20 years, and I've been here in the resident immigrant here in, in Santa Clara, in the county of Santa Clara. And I want to ask you, please, don't, don't, don't allow us to delay any more that vote because it's so important for us, our, us immigrants, to allow us to, because we all, we all pay taxes here and we allow, we deserve the allow to, to be able to vote. And that's why I'm here. I'm the District 3 and we really ask us that don't delay this any longer. Thank you. Letia? Latia? Sí, buenas tardes. Latia, yes, good afternoon. I'm Leticia here. I'm here in the Sacred Heart um, area here, and I'm just allowing all the um, the the collision here to be allowing us to the study session for the 23rd of May. If we don't have any time, or we don't want to to delay this any longer, not only are we asking us to be able to vote, but we also we want to see what you've been investigated here to be able to so many people here that allow us to that we pay our our taxes and we have a our, our right to vote and to allow this for all our representatives whatever doesn't matter what district they are we ask you that you take action for this not only for now but be able to be allow us to vote to the ballot here before September. And this is unacceptable, yes. So, and, and this is just, you're laughing at us here, and this is not, a, or you're deciding later than December. There's not enough time. We don't have enough time. It's time for us to be allow us to, and you have values for it, for the community, and it you're sincere allowing, because you're representing the community here not only Latinos here, but not everyone here in San Jose. San Jose is a very big city and it's it, it's improving in technology. And we don't have a lot of values here because of all the needs that we need and all, because you're not allowing us to. We need to, to be allowed to vote. We want to be included in all the decisions that affect us all. We want to be part of it, be able so that we belong to this, to San Jose. We we urge that you take action in this and not to making us feel less or we don't know what we're doing or maybe we don't understand what, how things are going. All the time is limited here and we understand this, how it should be and we also think and we ask oh, that there's enough time for us before in June, because that way we have the decision in June, and then in, we have all the community in the San Jose takes the decision to allow us to be a reality for us, not not just the councilmen and everything, but the community. Thank you. Trujillo Miguel Vasquez. Yes, good afternoon. Yes, Trujillo Miguel Vasquez, and I'm an um, activist, um, composer, and it's an honor that the leader here in my community, and that I'm beautiful city here. And I just want to express myself, my opinion here, and 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 to be allowed for the able to to vote here, not only a, um, a citizen here, but this is time for us to be, see the reality in our city and, and the Silicon Valley here. We are at in, in a beautiful diversity here because this city, it does just, uh, it hugs of everything, the traditions and languages and everything, it's really necessary as leaders to open our eyes and and here in the city council because we are leaders here in a community 
there, there, there's because there's so much diversity. There's a large uh, up, um, diversity here, and now is better than any time this because we have so many community of immigrants that are non um, citizens here. They're allowing their the, the time to be able to make our city uh, um, what it is now and to move it forward. Just people like myself and my others then all my other peers here also, because we really, uh, you're essential workers here, not only here, but the, for the world itself. And we are asking for that right. We're not gonna do anything bad here. We have demonstrated with love and we are maybe just um, just doing all the uh, ability to, to, uh, to come out of the pandemic here I think that we're doing a, a good action that we're doing and to include not only the, the city. Thank you. Angelica. Hola, muy buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Angelica. Good afternoon, my name is Angelica. I'm a resident of San Jose for over 25 years. I pay taxes quite a lot. And I'm upset and disappointed for the decision that was taken without taking in consideration our need. I urge that we keep this study session in May that we don't extend it any longer. Thank you. Socorro. Socorro. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Socorro. Um, I am a taxpayer and a citizen in San Jose, born, raised, and shaped by the innovative and diverse culture here. I'm a part of the Voice, Rights, and Vote Coalition. My community involvement is also why I'm questioning why we've had to turn out again and again and again to schedule the study session when our city council voted almost unanimously all the way back in January to study this issue of expanding voting rights to all residents. I'm one of many people who are disappointed and angered at the fact that you are delaying and making false promises on when to hold this study session. Since the council has already agreed, um, you are not doing what the council has asked from you. Please stop the delay, schedule the study session now. As shared by many people this week and last, we are ready to continue taking direct action and making noise in this city based on these decisions. You have the power to schedule the study session for a time when, when community that works full-time can turn out. This week and last, Rules Committee has been in the afternoon when many of our community members are working. And yet still many have made the time to be here, um, out taking time from their families and their work to make sure their voices are heard. The study session needs to be in the evening so it is accessible to our families and community all across the city. We are confident the reason why you haven't prioritized our voices is because many continue to lack citizenship and therefore the right to vote. vote but we know that our community voice and action is valuable. This is why we clearly need to prioritize expanding the vote to all residents of our city. Study the schedule session for May 23rd at 6 p.m. and allow our impacted community members to speak as the experts they are. Thank you, and thank you all for turning out today. Nayela Sedano. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Ayeli Sedano. I have lived in San Jose for 25 years. Uh, I work in San Jose. Um, I'm also a mother of three children who attend school here in San Jose. I have always lived in fear and in powerlessness due to limitations since I was five years old. I am a DACA recipient. I work in San Jose. I support families. I advocate and part of the community who day by day face the systems of oppression that continue alive today in many ways. By delaying the vote, it only shows how far back we are. Instead of moving towards an equitable, fair and visionary city, I urge the council to schedule the voting rights study session now. It's a huge disappointment to say the least 
to continue to see how democracy only involves certain people. Our feelings are real, our stories and our voices are real. Please stop the delay and use your power, take action and stand with community. Mary Lou. Uh, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Good afternoon. My, my name is Marilu. I'm a contributor and a resident of San Jose. We're upset. We are very uh, in disagreement with what you have done. The city council had agreed already to have this study session, and we were there when we requested that this study session was held in May. Stop delaying. I think you should uh, schedule this study session. The sooner the better. Schedule it for May 20th at 6 p.m. We're ready to take action. We're going to make noise based on your decision. We need to remember that we need to expand the demo the democracy and that's what we need to do here in San Jose and we need to take action on this item. Thank you for your time and for listening. Bye. Yurina, let's try you again. Uh, Yurina, uh, yes, good afternoon. This is Yurina Guzman. I'm part of the coalition to have a vote. I'm here just like with my community, I'm upset because the study session has been moved once again. Since January, we've been advocating so that we can have the study session. I believe that it's intentionally that this session is being moved so that we don't have it on the uh, ballot in November. Remember that we contributing with taxes, with the culture, and we have listened to so many people saying that this wants to be moved. So please, I urge that we keep this session for May, because if this doesn't happen, you, we know that it's not going to be on the ballot. And once again, we're going to be lied on because you're not doing the, your work. Please listen to the community. We need to have representation now. It's a right because we are already paid. Thank you. So once again, May 23rd at 6 p.m. That's the best time to have the uh, session. Thank you. Saul, um, Saul Ramos. Yes, hello, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Saul Ramos, co-executive director at Somos Mayfair. And it is time, it has been time. We've heard this over and over um, from our community. We look forward to this council's leadership to build a strong culture of civic engagement that builds strong representation and inclusion in our democratic processes and practices. So we have the opportunity, that is the opportunity that we have at hand and with your leadership and your work to ensure that we finally put in motion the mechanism to extend voting power to the people who day after day have built and maintained the wealth of this diverse community. We have an opportunity to make rights and wrongs and be at the vanguard of this massive movement. So I strongly urge you, like a huge number of community members to reconsider and maintain the study session and do not delay this process. Thank you very much and I yield my time. Rosario Aguirre. Rosario. Okay, I'm going to move on to Matt Gustafson. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Um, hi, my name is Matt Gustafson. I'm a resident and taxpayer in San Jose. I was born in San Jose and my family's lived in District 3 for the past eight years. I, like so many of, of my community, fellow community members who have spoken already, am, am deeply disappointed that we're seeing yet another delay to the study session on expanding voting rights in San Jose. 
I stand with all my neighbors who speak up today, neighbors of all documentation statuses, and demanding that you honor your commitment to hold a study session in May this month. There's so much political and social energy in our society right now trying to repress democracy. This is an urgent conversation about who really belongs in our city. Delaying it is a slap in the face to everyone who stands to benefit. And in my view, we all stand to benefit from this conversation, documented or not. In the words of the, of the late great Langston Hughes, a dream deferred is a dream denied. Don't delay or defer this conversation any longer. Schedule the study session for May 23rd at 6 p.m. Thank you. Rita Beretta. Buenas tardes. Uh, yo soy Rita Good, afternoon. Good afternoon, I'm Rita Virreta. I'm a resident of District 7. I'm a community leader and I'm in favor of the, the vote, to have the vote for everyone for the residents of Santa Clara, taking in consideration the working class. Please allow us to make decisions so that we can elect who we want to be represented by and also so that we can have a vote on anything that affects this city so and also so that we can expand democracy it's going to be positive for the whole city of san jose we know it's difficult but it's not impossible but i think that if we have your support our representatives we can achieve it i would like you to please schedule this study session for that schedule for May 23rd so that we can have it on the ballot. So I would like to that you hear our voices, our demands, that everything is in favor of our community, that we, because we want to be included so that we know how our taxes are going to be spent on because we all pay taxes. And also we want to be able to choose how the money is going to be spent. So thank you for listening and I yield my time. Daniel Vasquez. Daniel. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh. Hi, my name is Daniel, Daniel Vasquez and good afternoon. And I am a resident taxpayer in San Jose, and we are disappointed, angry, uh, because they have the, uh, are delaying the voting rights study session. The council, the council has already agreed to have this study session, and we have been present to ask that the study session pass in May, stop the delay, and would like to use the power to schedule the study as soon as possible. Schedule the study session for May 23 at 6 p.m. We are ready to take direct action and make noise in the city based on your decision. Or oh, we agree that expanding democracy is a positive thing we must do in San Jose and we must take action. And thank you. Um, you have a, a great day. Brenda. Good afternoon, my name is Brenda Garcia. I am a resident taxpayer in San Jose. I have lived in San Jose my whole life um, and I come from an immigrant family. We are disappointed that the voting rights study session is being delayed. We are tired of our community being oppressed when our immigrant community is the backbone of the city and should be considered in the next ballot. So please stop the delay and I would like the council to use the power that they have to schedule the study session for May 23rd at 6 p.m. Thank you. Back to the committee. Thank you. Uh, and thank you to all the members of the public who came out to speak. Um, before I take it over to the committee, uh, Tony, I want uh, you to speak directly to the May 23rd date and also kind of walk us through the process of um, from study session to potential ballot measure. 
Um, right. So May, May 23rd is Monday. And it, it was, it, I do think some of the speakers thought it was scheduled for May 23rd because I heard some people say that we had committed to that. We never committed to May 23rd. Um, that's Monday. And, and the timing to do a study session agenda, um, we can't get one done for May 23rd because um, a lot of people think we're following the Brown Act, but we don't. We have our own sunshine rules that require further posting than the Brown Act does. Um, as far as scheduling in June, um, June has the budget items and the agendas tend to be very packed in June um, with actions that are required to be done by the end of that month. Um, for the November ballot, although technically you can get pretty much anything you want to do, you can put a ballot amendment through before August 12th, but for something of this magnitude, there is a lot more that goes into it than just writing a resolution. Um, a study session is just that, it's a study session. There's no action taken. So after the study session, um, somebody would need to come back with direction to council, which could take a couple of weeks after that. Um, and then um, staff would need to put together a plan of implementation of the timing of when do you implement non-citizen voting. Um, I think New York City, you know, they haven't implemented it yet. It passed the ballot, but it won't be implemented until next year. It's a multi-year process. And to put together that plan is going to take a little longer than just, you know, a few, a few weeks, um, which is pretty much all we have before August for the November ballot. Okay, anything else, Tony? No, but I'm, I'm, have, I'm happy to answer questions about the timing. I'm going to keep my camera off. As you guys know, I've been sick and my face is puffy. <laughs> <laughs> Quite all right. So I want to keep the camera off. <laughs> no worries. Um, going back um, to the committee, uh, Councilmember Perales. Yeah, thank you. Um, and appreciate some of the explanation, Tony. Um, and I also heard clearly, right, and appreciate the frustration from our community members. And I think it's important to, to sort of um, make very clear how we got to, to where we're at today. Um, and I'll, I'll start this by saying uh, I have been one of the, the few council members to uh, already publicly uh, express my support of expanding voting rights for non-citizens, um, both uh, as we have an opportunity to put it on the ballot, um, and then I would vote in, in, in favor of that. Um, but it's, it's not up to, to just me or one of us. Uh, certainly there is a, a process here. And uh, I, I have personal reasons that, that match very similarly to a lot of the speakers that we heard today. My father immigrated to this country uh, undocumented as a, a youth, as a 12 year old coming with his family uh, and ultimately was able to become a legal permanent resident uh, where um, he remained for, for about 40 years and paid his taxes and, um, and, and didn't have an opportunity to, uh, to vote in our, our local elections. And it's, it's you know, personal to me. And I, I think that I, I, I relate to a lot of that sentiment, but I think there is also some, um, maybe some, some misinformed uh, frustration on on how we got to where we're at today, and I, I feel it's important to make that very clear. And so I, I wanted to walk through a little bit about the trajectory what got us here today. Um, and I will start by setting or saying as an example, um, I asked for a study session in regards to reducing gun violence and the causes uh, of that underlying causes of it. I asked for a, a comprehensive study session last September. And that study session still has not happened yet. Um, we are, are, are working towards that. One of the big challenges is getting everybody that we know we would need at that meeting to, uh, to participate and, and find a date that works for the entire city council, our city manager's team, um, our county, uh, as they're a participant in that. And uh, most recently, earlier this year, as we passed some new gun reform measures, I once again uh, inserted that into the direction and, and asked that we um, agendize that study session before the end of this fiscal year, which is June 30th. 
And, uh, and unfortunately, I've just learned as well that that is not likely to happen. Again, due to factors uh, out of my control, I am frustrated as well. Um, and it may be a year before we actually have that study session. It will likely be um, past July uh, and potentially August or September, a year after I've, I've, I've asked for it and I've asked for it a couple of times. Uh, so this is not something that I think is um, singled out as um, some people may be feeling as though um, there's, there's a, a singular sort of dedicated effort to try and, and delay this. Again, I have no interest personally in delaying this study session as I've already expressed uh, my support and my interest in this item. Um, but I wanna now kind of just walk through how we got here. Initially, we had a conversation on January 11th at a city council meeting where uh, we were discussing a number of charter, potential charter revisions. And, and there was a lot that had been discussed through a charter revision commission that had worked for a, uh, a year. And this particular recommendation came forward uh, that, that day or just a couple of days before, but it came forward for the first time for most of us to see that, that day on the 11th. And because of that, because there really had been no discussion on it, it hadn't been part of the Charter Revision Commission, um, a number of us expressed different opinions, me included, uh, but the thing we agreed on, as the community has expressed today, we agreed on a study session. We agreed to say, sure, let's, let's have that um, study session near, near unanimously. And, uh, and so that started the process of, of having a study session, and that was, uh, again, January 11th. And uh, we scheduled that study session, the first study session for April 29th, a Friday at 9 a.m. And I heard from the community both just prior to that meeting and at the rules meeting, a number of you likely that are on today that, that showed up at that rules meeting um, scheduling that, that 29th, a couple of weeks before the 29th, and asked us to move that date because 9 a.m. on a Friday was not going to be as inclusive of our community as we would want. And I agreed with that. And uh, I requested that we change the date from April 29th to an evening session. Uh, that we, let's find an evening session um, and, uh, and, and be able to, to, to schedule that, um, that hearing. Well, ultimately, the evening session that we that we landed on was yesterday. It was the 17th. We we agreed in April that we would move the meeting from the 29th again at the request of uh, our community members that we would move it and we we chose the 17th. Unfortunately, what we learned two weeks ago was that on the 17th, the presenter that we had invited, the expert and and from San Francisco that has expertise on this expansion of voting rights was not available on that date. So could we have decided to, to move forward without that? Sure. Uh, would the conversation have been as robust? No. And would our council have been confident on making a decision to move forward with putting something like this on the ballot? I can almost guarantee no, without having that, that true robust discussion. And so the first time I learned about it, along with the rest of the community was, was two weeks ago at the rules meeting, um, where uh, our, our city clerk here, Tony, said, hey, we can't make it happen on the 17th because our main presenter is not available. And at that time, I knew there was going to be tremendous interest from our community, from those of you that, that uh, likely participated last week and, and today. I knew there was going to be tremendous interest in this discussion on, well, if we're going to move the date, uh, let's make sure we get community input on that. So I specifically asked for this conversation today uh, that we agendize this discussion because otherwise the, the meeting was likely just going to be pushed out till uh, August or September anyways, uh, without even this discussion. And so uh, I asked for that so that we could have this discussion today and we could hear from you, our community, to say, hey, is there a better date that we could, um, that we could land on to have this study session? And uh, as we're learning today, the what, what the recommendation is from our, our clerk's office and our city staff on the next best opportunity to have everybody present, which includes, again, everybody from the city council, um, our city manager's team, our presenters, uh, would be September 6th. Uh, I don't know if that is completely true. We just talked a little bit about that. I know our, our uh, vice mayor Jones just inquired about that. I'll inquire again. I will say, for instance, 
next week, the 23rd. We, we could pick really any day we wanted if we wanted to pick a day and say, hey, let's have it on this day. That doesn't mean that everybody, again, can participate. I can't participate next Monday, for instance, on the 23rd. I don't know who else has conflicts, but, um, but just picking a date doesn't necessarily work. Uh, we have to coordinate the calendars and schedules of the entire council and our city manager staff and our presenters again. Um, and we wanna make sure we do this in an evening session so that that way we have community participation. And so with that, I, I'm not going to say I'm totally convinced that September 6th is the earliest next best date, um, but I wanna inquire a little further, Tony, on what uh, Vice Mayor Jones did, which is, is there an opportunity for an earlier date um, in an evening that we can go out and inquire from our presenters and then the council um, to see if we can have this sooner than September 6th. My original date was August 29th and the city manager's office did request that I move it to the first week of September because in August, the council will be going through a two day session on racial equity training. And they thought that equity training would better inform um, the council about the equity issues, which would, which is part of what the non-citizen voting rights was for. And I agreed that I thought that's a good background for you guys to all have training in prior to the non-citizen voting discussion. Um, having it earlier in August um, or, or in September, neither one of them will affect what ballot it gets onto. Um, it, it, either date, no matter if it's the second week of August, that's going to be too late to get it onto the November ballot anyway. So delaying to the first week of September to en enable you guys to have that important training prior to the non-citizen voting discussion, um, it does. It will not affect the long-term um, prospect of this particular item. Okay, it, it is so, and I'm not as concerned about having that particular uh, equity. Uh, presentation and conversation before having this study session. Is there another date before that that, that well, would I be had... possible sometime in, in, in obviously July is, is not possible. So the only dates we're looking at are really June or, or August. And you expressed already that June, um, it, I don't know if there's no availability or what it looks like in June, but that's, that's what I'm, I'm I am trying to uh, determine definitively, right, that there are, there isn't really an earlier opportunity than what we proposed. For June, I would, um, I, I would really need to coordinate with CMO because they've, they have the long-term horizon report on everything coming to council in June. Um, August 29th was my original date. I did confirm everybody, um, this, all the presenters for August 29th already. So that's a, that's a week earlier. Um, it gets it within August. I might be able to go earlier in August. I would need to pull people again um, because, you know, he's a professor, he has classes. And then um, the ROV is also another office um, that will be coming because they would they would do a significant chunk of this work um, if we were to pass it. And ROV, sorry, just to make it very clear, oh, yeah. reg register of voters. Yes, reg the registrar of voters. Yeah, and they, they need to participate in this discussion uh, can you describe that or would you like me to? Yeah, they would need to participate in the discussion because there are, we're looking at multiple options of if we were in, to implement this, who's going to manage the additional database because you would have the like regular registered voters through the state, but you were, you're going to have separate voters and how you guys decide to move forward affects how we implement it, which is why the study session is so important because like city of, of New York, it, it's reg, it's limited to legal resident um, immigrants, not just all immigrants. It doesn't include undocumented immigrants. Um, the city of Barnesville, Maryland population 144 is all residents, which I'm sure 144 residents is pretty easy to manage when you have basically one one blocks worth of of people um but they're they're all residents and it doesn't need to to have be a legal resident or not so how you guys want to implement it affects how we implement it is it all residents are you including felons um you know there's there's a lot of moving pieces and the rov wants to hear all of that discussion because we need to know where the way the council would be leaning to 
And then that would help us come back and, and be able to come up with an implementation plan. Besides the Register of Voters Office, um, can you explain for everybody here who else is participating in this? I've, I've already said the council, obviously city manager's well, office, your, ROV, your office. Uh, yeah, the ROV, the professor, and I've planned to, I haven't invited anybody else. I have talked with people in New York City and San Francisco um, about how they're implementing it and what they're doing, uh, but I haven't invited them to come. Um, I'm kind of waiting to get a final date and then I, I can invite other people. I'm planning to, you know, work with the city manager's office to get this out on social media because, you know, they have a much greater reach than I have. And then um, I've got my, I think I have 202 people on a mailing list. They will all be getting notice for, you know, whatever date we land on that, you know, here's the date, here's the time, please come because I do think that a big component is the members of the public to, you know, how do they, how do they envision it happening? It's a big project. It's very exciting. Um, <laughs> I like research and I like reading about all this stuff. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to having, hearing the council discussion and being able to help you guys move forward with whatever you decide. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, and, and I, I recognize it's, complex but since i'm not coordinating it uh, i don't even know how complex and so i appreciate you expressing that a little bit here uh, i i also don't want to keep moving the date because i know that that's very confusing as well for anybody that's going to participate i believe what you're saying that moving it from the end of august to the first week in september is likely not a a a, a major um difference in, in benefit I, I would agree with that so what I would say is that uh, in order to try to keep some consistency, and since we have a date today that we are, we can confirm and put on a calendar, I'm comfortable with approving that recommendation, but I will make an additional request that you do see if we can find a date sooner um, and that you report back to the rules committee on um, if, if you know two weeks is enough again, where you can let us know if you know you were able to coordinate a sooner date, uh, but I don't want to put out a date like we did last time with the 17th and get right. people's hopes up, right? And 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 then and then just to uh, change it again. So I I prefer to keep it with where it's at on the calendar, but I do want to want to ask. And so I'll, I'll make the motion to approve the consent, um, and then for this particular study session, to leave it at the sixth today but to give direction to Tony to see if we can expedite that um, you know, much sooner and for, for you to report back in a couple of weeks, Tony. Okay. Uh, yeah, Councilmember Pross, can you define much sooner? Because uh, say you move it from September 6th to you know, August 29th or August 28th. I mean, is there, do you have- Yeah, I'm being, I'm being flexible what, here because Tony's already sooner. described that August 29th could be a possible date. If that's the best that we can do, right, for a for a, a sooner date, um, we may hear some consensus from our community that they like that better than the sixth. And a couple of weeks gives us an opportunity to to understand that. And if Tony comes back in two weeks and says the soonest we can do is the 29th, right? Like that's it. Um, then then in my mind we we make a decision at that point that do we want to keep it at the sixth or do we want to move to the 29th? Again, the only reason I don't want to land on any other date now is I, i'm just i don't think it's good to keep moving the date around yeah I agree. so that that's why i'm being flexible and as soon as possible right that because i you know i would like to just hear when, when whenever that may be how much sooner could it be all right so we have a motion uh do i hear a second rob's got his hand up i i'll wait until rob speaks before i second sorry it blends into the yellow in my background there um <laughs> Wait, yeah, so um, the administration city manager's office can work with uh, Tony on that date, uh, council member. Um, there is an option in August. We might have to shift an equity meeting, uh, but we'll work together and come back to you with, uh, with a date that won't move. I'll second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, no other hand are raised. Uh, Tony? Cohen? Aye. Davis? Yes. Corrales? Yes. Jones? Aye. 
Thank you. All right. Uh, next is uh, protecting reproductive rights in the city of San Jose. Uh, we're going to go to public comments first. Tony? Blair? Hi, Blair Beekman. Uh, good luck on, on this is another uh, issue that it needs our community understanding and help and support. Um, I think if nothing else, uh, I'm upset with the fact that, I mean, Roe versus Wade is, is such a watershed moment to our lives. Uh, the way it's just being dismissed and disregarded, uh, if they are going to move forward with, uh, you know, this sort of thing that these sort of, I mean, it's such an important measure in our lives that it needs some sort of uh, weight. It needs, it needs discussion. And it needs, uh, I don't know, how we make the next steps out of Roe versus Wade is not, not this way, I don't think. And it's being unceremoniously dismissed, basically. And I, it's just the wrong way to fully handle this situation, I feel. So good luck how we can talk about this issue and uh, just make it a really open, intelligent conversation where we are at with Roe versus Wade. I suppose we have moved on a bit, but that doesn't mean that we have to uh, dismiss, you know, rights of, of women and choice. And I think uh, that's an important consideration we have to have. And um, I, I was for the June study session. Uh, hopefully you can still talk about that instead of just August uh, for the previous item. Thank you. <clears throat> Diana? Hi, uh, my name is Diana Zamora. I'm the Director of Public Affairs for Plant Parenthood of Marmonte, which is the largest affiliate in the nation and um, covers the entire city of San Jose. I just wanna thank um, all of the council members who brought this item forward and also thank the council and the mayor for their previous um, support when they unanimously passed a resolution naming the city of San Jose a defender of, of, of reproductive freedom. You know, as, as we know, um, our nation is facing methodical and frightening attack on reproductive rights. And so maintaining a safe access to reproductive health care services is really a medical critical importance, um, not only to individuals, but also to the overall health, safety, and welfare of all residents in the city. Uh, we have already seen more than double out-of-state patients than we have seen in the past. Um, and unfortunately, many patients that we do see do encounter harassment, obstruction, um, or, you know, folks otherwise trying to interfere with their individual right for seeking reproductive health care services. Um, you know, I, I think it's important to mention that um, reproductive freedom is intertwined with many issues of social justice, including things like ec economic, gender, and racial equity. And so having a really strong support system is, is critical to ensuring that everyone in the city, regardless of their background, has access to the care they need. Um, and so I just really, again, want to, uh, I want to thank the rules committee and all the, the members for um, showing support for reproductive freedom and standing with those that are seeking to be able to access care in a way that is safe and meaningful. Thank you for your time. Victor. Uh, good afternoon, once again. Uh, I want to thank this committee as well in the city of San Jose for um, setting themselves as a, a model of protection of people's rights and reproductive rights as well. And it, they're human rights. The human rights to, to your body, to your well-being. Um, and, we, and we promote that and support that. I support that as an individual as well. But I wanna thank you for having that courage of moving beyond uh, the status quo or, or some of these um, ideas that are about restriction and controlling people's bodies. And, and so I wanna thank you for taking this on and, and commend you on this and moving forward. And it's a human right. Thank you. Back to the committee. All right, um, Council Member Davis. Thank you. I, um, since this is my memo, I wanna thank my colleagues, Council Members Carrasco, Esparza, Arenas and Foley for co-signing it with me. And I just want to point out uh, 
that's because we have a limit of five and all the female council members are in a Brown Act on reproductive rights. So I didn't get the chance to offer it to my other uh, colleagues. And I, I'm certain that they are likely to sign on. And the reason that, that I'm certain is that we have had uh, unanimous support for reproductive rights in the past on our council. And I, the reason I brought it forward now is that I believe it's important for us to stand in solidarity as a council once again, and as a city to demonstrate that reproductive rights will be protected in our community. And I'm sure everyone knows why we're doing that. It's because we are awaiting that final decision uh, to be published by the Supreme Court and after our uh, very disturbing news was released um, about about Roe versus Wade possibly being um, struck down. And so we have to assert our right as a city government to pass public safety measure women who are seeking an abortion, abortion service providers, and anyone who assists individuals as they are seeking an abortion. And that's what the um, that's what the memo is about today. And I could go on and on, but I'm, I'm not going to. I'm just going to say that uh, as the, the Planned Parenthood person spoke, it's that Planned Parenthood Marmonte is in my district. And it's important to me that their patients and their health providers there feel like San Jose is a safe space to provide safe health interventions and health care. So with that, I am going to move my memo. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, Councilmember Cohen. Yeah, thank you. And I wanna thank Councilmember Davis and everyone else in that Brown Act for introducing uh, the, the this memo. Um, as Councilmember Davis knows, I reached out to her actually about joining with her to put together a memo, but it's very appropriate, the, the group that did. Um, we've all been sickened thinking about the um, the ramifications of the Supreme Court action that's coming. Um, and it's important for us to act as a city, as Councilmember Davis said, to, to, for protection. We, we should also be looking at other cities in the area that have done more to protect, or have done things, I don't wanna say more, but have done things to protect those who use clinics in their city. And I know Walnut Creek has recently enhanced their protection. So we, I just wanna make sure staff will be looking at everything that's happening in the cities around us. And lastly, I just wanna thank Diana and Planned Parenthood for all they do to for uh, women's health and and actually not just women but for health uh, in our community, um, but in this instance particularly women's health and uh, make sure they know that my office is uh, here to help if there's ever any um, anything that Planned Parenthood needs um, let let us know and and we're uh, here to be part of the the team to protect women's health in in our community and I, and then the last thing I want to say is. There's been a few comments made by people in, you know, in, who are non, on different sides on this issue saying, well, why do you care what's happening with Roe v. Wade and in other states? California is gonna be fine. The answer is that women's health all over the country matters. Um, and while we can do what we can to protect people here, the idea that so many millions of people will suffer and so many health complications will occur and so many other um, risks are at play for women all over the country and other places that are not as protective and caring of women's health um, is, a, is something that we should all be concerned about and it matters to all of us. So anyway, I was happy to uh, second this and I'm happy to support it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Perales. Yeah, I wanna say thank you as well to Councilmember Davis uh, and my colleagues for bringing this forward. It uh, It is, embarrassing and appalling that we have so many men in our country trying to take this right away from women, this decision. Um, and I, I would agree with what Councilmember Cohen just said and Councilmember Davis uh, in the memo and in their, their efforts on uh, how we can stand up and be a beacon. And, um, and I, so I, I wholeheartedly support this. We absolutely should be doing whatever we can here uh, and and set the example that maybe other states or other elected officials across the country are not doing, and, and we need to counteract that and counterbalance that. And uh, and so I appreciate my colleagues uh, bringing this forward and and um, absolutely support it. Thank you. So um, no other hands raised. Um, Tony, we have a motion and a second. 
Uh, roll call, um, please. And Vice Mayor, this is Nora. May I? I'm yeah. sorry, I should have raised my hand. May I um, just ask one question? Go uh, ahead, Nora. I want to make sure that I understand um, what, what uh, the council members had in mind um, with this memo, um, because we will uh, obviously we'll be doing a lot of research in my office to see what kinds of things can be done. Um, San Jose currently has, and, and it's gone through a lot of litigation and testing and uh, has been upheld, but we currently have two ordinances. One protects um, people from uh, protesters and demonstrators, we call it a bubble ordinance, um, but if you're within 100 feet of a medical facility no, and you don't want, you want to keep someone away, the ordinance says they have to stay eight feet away. And um, that distance was upheld in a case coming out of Colorado. There were some recent decisions in the last uh, couple months, including I think this past week, um, that have uh, struck down provisions that were more than eight feet, something like 30 feet and that kind of thing. Um, but we have that provision and then we also have um, the residential targeted picketing, picketing ordinance. And um, that in part would allow us to protect um, homes of uh, doctors who are providing abortions or those kinds of things, um, politicians supporting them, whatever. Um, and so I was, I'm trying to understand if it's, if it's that type of um, law that you're thinking about and you want us to make sure that um, we don't, that current changes in the law aren't going to affect those or are there some other ideas um, that you've been thinking about that we should consider and research? Thank you, Nora. Um, is it all right, Vice Mayor, for me to respond? Yes, please. Okay. Um, thank you, Nora, for that question. Yes, definitely want to make sure that what we already have on the books is um, sufficient and it, and for whatever may come down um, from the from the Supreme Court. But also, there has been some discussion in other cities about protecting um, providers and and people who are assisting women to get their abortions here from any kind of um, legal action in other states. And if there is a possibility for us to do that, we definitely want to do that. What we, the research that my office did, um, we know that that Oakland did a sanctuary city status um, about, about abortion, but we had gotten some, um, we had gotten an opinion that that was more ceremonial and didn't actually have any teeth. So I, I just heard council member Cohen talk about Walnut Creek. So basically what, what else can we do to ensure that women who are coming here potentially from out of state will okay. be protected in the same ways that women here and, and providers here are protected in our state. Okay, that's helpful. So we want to we we want to ensure that if 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 at all possible that's what we want to look at. Um, in addition to you know we do want to ensure the safety of people at Planned Parenthood Marmonte, for example. And and I appreciate the the I did not know about the no picketing in residential. Um, that's very helpful to know. So even a report on that in your in um, to council would would be very helpful for us to all have that information, what's available. Okay, thank you. And those those ordinances that we have are quite, uh, they, they came out of the Operation Rescue um, efforts um, back in the 90s, I think, and uh, at Marmonte um, in particular. So um, we will brief that and then I'll look at what, it, um, what other options and the idea of people coming to California um, yeah. and, potentially facing legal action in their own state. So, all right, that's helpful, very helpful, thank you. Yeah, and anything we can do, um, if we need to do any kind of strengthening of what we've had since mm -hmm. 1990 was a long time ago, <laughs> a long time ago, if there's any strengthening we can do to those laws, that would be fantastic. All right, thank you. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Tony. 
Cohen? Aye. Davis? Yes. Morales? Yes. Jones? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. On to open forum. Uh, Blair Beekman? Hi, right. Blair Beekman here. Um, I guess today uh, what I, I want to try to uh, speak about the weighty subject of what happened in Buffalo a few days ago. I'm really saddened about uh, that happening and I'm saddened that uh, people are still thinking that if they, you know, blow away a shopping mall that somehow that's going to like, it's a way to garner attention. and. I, there just has to be, we have, I hope our schools, we're introducing, you know, different ways that we can get attention from each other. Um, for all his anger and vitriol, he's going to have to sit down and have conversations about what he's angry about and, and work through that anger and, and understand it and address it in order to just mature as a human being. And I, I he, he's going to have to learn lessons of maturity. It's just sad when we all I think go through those mistakes of, of, of doing things drastic when we don't have to. Um, I, I, I wanted to offer that I, it's my feeling there's a, a set of human rights and worker rights and civil rights issues that we're all working on here in San Jose, the Bay Area. Um, you know, there's four or five items, you know, racial equity, uh, tenants rights issues, worker rights issues, uh, Medicare for all, my openness and accountability ideas or practices, not mine, but you know, those sort of practices, openness and accountability, all of those concepts, I think are just inclusive to all parts of the community to want to work on and build a future of a community. And that's an interesting idea that I think, you know, we're gonna be talking about surveillance needs again, which is a, an important question, but it's, it's these uh, ideas that I've just mentioned that we can work on as a full community process that invites the full community. That's the, kind of, that's the good stuff. And that's, that's, I hope we can all learn to work on that as a whole community process. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you. And this meeting is adjourned. Take care, everyone.